<laughs> good, good, good. Uh, welcome to World University and Schools monthly business meeting on June 16th, 18th, June 18th, 2022. And uh, this is Larry Veland on the phone, and I'm Scott McLeod. Uh, Larry, shall we move through the agenda? Go ahead. All right. Um, the first item I'd love to explore is um, the possibility of Sidwell Friends uh, High School um, in the Washington, D.C. area uh, and their graduating class and possibly uh, some students who might be interested in online from home free to students bachelor's degrees. Okay. Uh, curious, uh, a professor at George Fox University near Portland, Oregon, said congratulations recently to Sidwell Friends graduates and to me. And He's a member of Friends Association for Higher Education, as is World University and School, or at least I am. Um, okay. Any thoughts of uh, on how we might follow up on uh, reaching out to Sidwell Friends uh, uh, recent graduates to matriculate at World University and School? Well, you might want to, at this point, appeal to anybody who's not yet chosen a school to go to or and or wants one that avoids con physical contact. Great points. Um, I would think that that would happen through potentially, uh, possibly uh, even Friends Association for Higher Education. Um, right. And, and they I'm not sure individual students would be plugged into that. Yeah, I would think they might not, but I would also think Sidwell Friends has a history of um, of its students going to many of those colleges and universities in um, Friends Association for Higher Education's um, purview. So um, there may be a series of uh, some relationships there we could follow up on. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. Did you get a list of names because of that email, or did you not? Uh, that was um, a, a, a retweet. Um, okay. And so I'm most in touch with, um, with David Ross, uh, Bryn Mawr Professor Emeritus uh, of Economics at FAHE, Friends Association of Higher, for Higher Education. And I suppose I could uh, reach out further to David Ross and Paul Anderson with his tweet, and also one or two others at FAHE. Um, and uh, you suggested uh, people who, Sidwell Friends graduates who hadn't chosen a college yet and who also yeah. might want, um, not want physical contact after these right. two years of non. So uh, if you had names, Give them an email and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. Well, uh, uh, the agenda news went out to a whole long list of Friends Association for Higher Education students um, or, or um, people, members, I guess. Um, yeah, that's my for starter question. I'm not sure individual students have actually in or somehow plugged into that. Right, right. Um, I would, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can follow up on Paul Anderson's congratulations message, um, right. and, uh, see where that's coming from. Um, uh, it would be great if we could get a student body this September 1st. <laughs> um, yeah. and okay. it would, okay. don't let your uh, hopes get beyond your, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it would also be great, uh, if. Um, possible coding teams, uh, uh, say hypothetically a Google um, coding team in the Anywhere School, it's Anywhere School, um, could 
even focus um, changing their direction a little bit on coding, say, CC4 ocw.mit.edu courses into um, a, a Google platform and even uh, a World University and School course app. Um, and to have that target of Sidwell Friends academic background um, and uh, the possibility of a hypothetical Google coding team um, and perspective, a group of prospective students uh, all coming together um, would be a real opportunity. Uh, they wouldn't be, a Google coding team wouldn't be coding for um, sort of uh, the high school student body who would be all going to MIT, um, or a Google coding team wouldn't be coding for a high school student body that would be going to community colleges in California. Um, it's a it's a focus, and uh, the MIT OCW as Creative Commons for licensed is adaptable and could be an opportunity, a creative opportunity for many different groups. Um, so so that's uh, agenda item two. I'm just going to um, move to agenda item one briefly. That World University and School continues to offer online free to students Creative Commons for OCW.MIT.edu centric uh, and also CC4 licensed CC CS first Creative Com Computer Science first with Google at WUAS courses bachelor degrees. That was a mouthful of adjectives, but I can. <laughs> Done back fully. So go ahead. <laughs> World University and Schools continuing to offer bachelor and PhD degrees on Creative Commons period. for Stop. license. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so period. Stop. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, item agenda item three. Um, uh, momentously, the World University and School migration journey to wikibase.cloud, Wikidata, Wikimedia is complete. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it was amazing. It took a while. <laughs> yeah, there were delays along the way uh, from their stated first finishing time for uh, uh, World University and School in their batch B. Um, but they completed it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, okay. what, what that means is um, uh, something I'm still learning, but uh, the World University and School Nation States Wiki subject page in MediaWiki, in WUAS MediaWiki, um, is much more together than it was. And right. it, it, it seems like it's an interesting opportunity to begin to create uh, 200 online universities. Um, All right. right at the uh, sort of as a starting point beyond um, the 50 to 75 uh, universities for these 75 countries that already have a beginning um, as a world university and school university. Okay. Um, so wikibase.cloud is the management software in a way for Wikidata as a backend structured knowledge database. Uh, we'll be able to manage all kinds of collections of data, scientific data, um, library data, museum data, uh, and in 300 languages. Um, so item 3A is, um, WUS has been in Wikidata since 2015, and they now have uh, 1 billion 660, 60, 660 million edits. Uh, that's a lot of group editing. Um, that certainly is. <laughs> and that's Software a. It, also what's means that? That's a very large number of baloney ones, too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a small percentage, but multiplied by that huge number, you're going to have a fair number of pages that are junk. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it may just be, um, you know, adding a single. Um, uh, I, I understand. Item to a field. <laughs> um, yeah. But yes, there. I mean, quality of data is a key issue, but it's an interesting metric. Um, could World University and School, uh, as a metric, 
um, uh, 10 times this, or could a world university and school as a metric um, uh, grow this number just for a world university and school in Wikidata uh, 100 times? And uh, uh, it's a one simple number <laughs> and it's growable. <laughs> so um, okay. um, uh, interesting direction. Another item 3B is uh, I recently saw that Wiktionary, is, which is a uh, Wikimedia Germany project, one of about 10 or 12 of their projects, which include Wikidata and Wikibase.cloud, I think, uh, now says they plan to be in all languages. Oh, OK. So, but going to English um, only, it sounds like. Uh, they've uh, Wiki, Wikimedia and Wikidata have long been in 300 languages only, uh, leaving about 6,900 languages to go of the yeah. 7,000 languages. Uh, so uh, it's great, I think, that Wiktionary is maybe thinking in terms of, um, and, Wiki, and Wikimedia is thinking in terms of all languages, 7,151 living languages. Um, but that leaves a lot of opportunity. I'll let the mathematicians fa figure out how much uh, for going from the Japanese language uh, to Indonesian with its huge population and for all kinds of publishing of books and things like that, or from um, all of Africa to uh, languages to Russian, for example. Um, yeah. That that the numbers get pretty big pretty quickly in terms of uh, from two languages, and their possibilities for wiki growing, um, growing careers, growing um, uh, by all these people who speakers of seven thousand languages who grow up with a language coded in their body um, from birth. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll hire them if we can. <laughs> Uh, hopefully with the um, Google-like platform for hiring, too, for productivity and things like this. Um, agenda item four, thank you, Larry Velen, Chief Financial Officer, uh, so much for the two WUAS financial reports again. Okay. And uh, as I was looking around in GuideStar recently, uh, which is um, a list in America of information for every nonprofit registered with the Internal Revenue Service as a tax exempt. Uh, I saw that you're still listed as the chair of the board for World <laughs> University and School. <laughs> okay. um, so, um, well, at least it's better than listing somebody who's <laughs> not active anymore. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> And um, as uh, World University and School continues to um, grow and grow in other countries and call for abolition as well. Uh, item uh, agenda 4A, um, the California Franchise Tax Board Form 199 for the year 2019 which they sent um, a paper letter to the World University and School of Canyon PO Box 442-94516 in the Bay Area, uh, they sent a paper letter requesting a Form 199 or an e-postcard 199N. And we, you and I, sent in this Form 199 instead for 2019, as well as a cover letter and a check for $65. So I talked with the California Franchise Tax Board yesterday twice, and first to Robert Morgan again, who is uh, the, the California Franchise Tax Board person who I talked with last November after we paid our initial taxes um, of 2930 and 98 cents, and in a way got a green light from the California Franchise Tax Board as I see this for the WS Corporation. So I talked with him again yesterday and he suggested calling a different um, department at the California Franchise Tax Board that focuses on exempt organizations. His uh, department focuses on 
uh, corporations and uh, general yeah, stock. For, What's that? For the money, yeah. Yeah, it may be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> um, and uh, so I talked with Julie. Uh, I was surprised that I got through on the phone. And she said, we're good. Um, the, uh, although they for which year now? That was a question I had when your email arrived. Was that just for 2019 or is it always? Uh, the the paper letter they sent was requesting a 199N for 2019, just 2019. Yes. And what about 2020? Yeah. yeah, I think you've raised that before. Um, there, um, they they probably got the letter. They may have gotten the letter 10 days ago, and they said it could take another three weeks to process it. Um, All right. As they figure it out, maybe we'll <laughs> maybe we'll get another letter <laughs> for the 2020 199. So basically, don't do anything to get a letter from them. That's my understanding. OK. Um, it was good to talk with Robert Morgan before that also yesterday. And um, he said, um, among other things, as we that that maybe a question of um, the word control comes up with our with these two entities um, from their perspective. And that's probably uh, legalese and ownership uh, language also uh, from the California Franchise Tax Board. Um, but uh, I'm thinking that monthly business meeting is where uh, those questions would emerge further if they are significant. Yeah, but I would interpret the word control as he's or they're interested in whether the nonprofit controls the profit making or vice versa or the independent, et cetera. That's, I don't think they mean by people or the monthly business meeting. I think they're wondering uh, which organization controls what. I agree, a uh, good point. Um, and uh, as we communicate with them further, maybe we'll define that further. Uh, since thanks to you, well, partly defined already in our mission state, if you want to call it that, whatever it is, the, the organization says the, for the whole purpose of the money making thing is to generate funds for the nonprofit. Yep, yep. Um, good point. Um, so we'll wait to hear from them and. Uh, We'll also see what emerges with regard to um, the cover letter and other communications with regard to, oh, the other thing he said was that uh, the California Franchise Tax Board had heard, um, uh, he was calling back maybe because I had gone on into the um, District 7 California State Senator's office in Orinda, for example, and emailed them to so there's communication going on there um, in some of these regards, uh, which is good to know about um, in terms of our relationship with the state of California, for example, in various guises. Um, the, Basically, I yeah. think overall that they're set up to respond to people that have money that they can tax and we're set up to be you know, the way we're set up puts us last on their list of interest because we don't have any money and we don't give, gonna give them much if anything and so consequently they don't put a high priority on us yeah i appreciate uh your thinking there that we became a, a non-profit exempt entity in california in 2010 i think um yeah. about 12 years ago uh could mean that state of California has lost a lot of revenue, <laughs> or on the other hand, that we're low down on their priority list, like you yeah. say. <laughs> um, and then we that we became a for-profit general stock company in the WUS Corporation, um, California state of California Franchise Tax Board in 2017, um, and paid a, a whopping sum of money last November and more this spring, uh, may influence some of these questions. Um, yeah. I think you're right. Um, agenda item five. Um, so uh, Gerard in the Philippines has asked to unsubscribe to two email lists. 
And then he uh, has also wondered about becoming um, various forms of board members or directors uh, with a certificate. And uh, I am uh, also wondering whether um, the possibility of misuse of a certificate of appointment from uh, World University and School could emerge um, and uh, am thinking that um, it might be wise and prudent on World University and School's uh, side to just unsubscribe him per his uh, recent two emails requests. Well, you sent an email asking what was up, but my first thought was he was just going through and cleaning out his email and everything that pops up that he didn't immediately think of, he has subscribed to. <laughs> <Yeah>, maybe. <laughs> uh, Instead of just working on us, I think he probably went through and did it all. And so I would wait and see what he responds to that email that you sent, whatever, this week. Was it, wasn't it this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, good thinking as well. Um, uh, I wonder if we were to get involved further in the Philippines or in Asia um, and all the countries in that region, whether ICIP might be in a good direction to go in. Um, I'm mostly, um, I, I guess I'm uh, also concerned abolition wise um, with regard to um, possibly this curious um, Ted, someone from a few years ago, a few years ago, which we talked about, whom we talked about in business meeting, who wanted extreme anonymity um, and uh, may have been involved in uh, an illegal, um, illegal criminal activities, I don't know, uh, affiliated with the San Francisco Quaker meeting. And um, am, I'm wary of that as well. So, uh, okay. Uh, well, at the moment, we don't have to do anything on Gerard again. Just wait. Yep. 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 The email was this week. We just give it a while to respond. Sounds good. Um, agenda item six um, California Institute for Regenerative Medicine had a free live stream on Thursday. And uh, it was interesting. The video recording is in the agenda and news. Uh, did you happen to see it by any chance? No, I didn't. So it's an interesting um, direction for world university and school as well in exploring um, further uh, world university and school longevity genetics institute and uh, possibly with regard to regenerative medicine. And the, the two things that were not mentioned in this um, talk were anything about um, uh, either a realistic virtual earth for genetics, uh, such as might open targets might be for um, the um, identifying drug development uh, opportunities at the molecular level with even Google search and Google Cloud. Um, and it also didn't mention doubling lifespan um, or anything about longevity uh, sort of goals. So, I mean, it did mention an interesting patch, a physical patch that was inserted by surgery into a person's eye that improved vision of 17 letters. The person had macular degeneration, 17 yeah. alphabet letters. Um, so there's progress being made in California regenerative medicine genetically, but there's a long way to go. And how can, oh, world, yeah. how can world university and school help? Um, and could we do this even with a WS Longevity Genetics Institute on the ridge with uh, in Canyon, California with six species? Um, 
could we even double their, seek to double their lifespans? Doubling human lifespans to 244 years over the oldest documented age of 122. Doubling yeah. just sawfly fly to um, lifespan to uh, six months or so. And um, how would that work digitally as well? Um, I'm aware that, um, for example, a good friend of my mother's, Jean Thomas, who's 93, um, is getting older and uh, genetics that might be along the lines of um, making people stronger, um, faster, uh, be able to um, create a, a reversal of so-called muscle wasting could be a way to prioritize and focus the development of a realistic virtual earth for genetics and for regenerative medicine with some uh, even urgency. Any thoughts about this focusing opportunity to move this science further? I'm going to call Larry Veland back. So to move forward, um, agenda item eight, uh, Lego humanoid robotics um, is something World University and School would like to continue to focus on. Um, and in being a carrier of uh, three Lego robotics kits, and potentially in a realistic virtual earth for Lego. Agenda item nine, uh, in what ways can we develop further our world university and school um, next steps with 200 medical schools online. Uh, agenda item 10, um, we continue to focus on many Google Street View with time slider centric explorations, including 200 online world-class university libraries, and also for genome research. Uh, agenda item 11, uh, hello, Larry. You disappeared again. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, the phone signal dropped. Um, yeah. uh, continuing on, um, am curious about your uh, further thoughts about um, how we might develop an online a uh, set of medical schools. Um, and with regard in particular to agenda item 14, um, Uganda World University and School and uh, online medical school and online teaching hospital there. And uh, regarding a recent trip by Gerard McLeod, MD, and his wife, Minna, to a, ho a hospital in southwest Uganda, in a, near a town called Ibanda, Uganda, where he mentions in his last email from there the possible 
uh, benefits of um, surgery and even telerobotic surgery. And as an anesthesiologist, a retired anesthesiologist, there would be um, interesting possibilities with uh, developing in our online teaching hospitals uh, for, for example, this hospital in Southwest Uganda, um, online surgical robots uh, that would be telerobotic and even uh, work with a realistic virtual earth for surgery. Um, this is something, an interesting long-term focus that would require a lot of knowledge and expertise, medical and engineering wise and robotics wise, uh, but an interesting goal. Uh, thoughts about developing this in our online teaching hospitals, Larry? Well, we need somebody, as you're pointing out, with the knowledge and ability to get this going. I mean, we can we can make it fly if you're talking about coursework, that's not a problem, but to actually go beyond that is a lot of difficulty. And it also has a legal implication, so that we gotta have somebody in the specific country that we're involved with who can sort of guide it. So we need to get some person with knowledge there. So um, beyond uh, Gerard McLeod, MD, and his knowledge on the ground now, having been to- uh, Or is he staying there? I thought he was just visiting. He was visiting, but he's an MD. Yeah. One of- Yeah, well, that's fine, but he's still not presumably there and not familiar with their legal brother. That would be my worries. One of the um, sort of things he's suggesting is, um, or uh, he um, is based in the state of US state of Georgia. And uh, there's an interesting possibility with Kaiser Permanente being in medical organization, health organization, being in the state of Georgia. And uh, possibly for all the knowledge they have, were they to want to um, expand, for example, overseas and uh, grow also as an organization in collaboration with World University and School and with... Um, but unfortunately, yeah. that wouldn't give them any increase in money. And I don't detect the uh, strong motive if there's not the applications for them to do that. Interesting. Um, our our uh, business plan for our online degrees, in many ways, based on Creative Commons for licensed resources like ocw.mit.edu, are um, to get reimbursements from countries. Yeah, that's for our purpose. What purpose would there be for Kaiser Permanente? So if we in our medical schools and online teaching hospitals and in collaboration with Kaiser Permanente with Ed Smythe MD as a, our new chief medical officer could become, um, uh, for example, get reimbursements for uh, medical degrees or even get reimbursements from the Uganda government uh, for procedures in the hospital, there would be uh, that potential for Kaiser Permanente too to benefit financially, is my thinking. All right, so there's a tenuous one, but it's got a long way to develop. Yeah, um, it, a, a very long way to develop. And we have a long-term horizon as well. Um, and we will uh, potentially um, be able to focus some of these questions of even telerobotic surgery development um, and in a realistic virtual earth for surgery uh, for, for also um, even in space travel. Um, 
potentially in uh, all 200 countries. And Uganda could be, a, a, as well as California, could be good starting places and focuses um, for developing this, I think. Uh, Long-term horizon, I agree. Um, and, and what would be the procedures that uh, making telerobotic surgery surgeons uh, possible, what would be the 10 or 20 first initial procedures that ro robots would be programmed for, uh, engineered for, I guess would be a first question that might have a five or 10 or 20 year horizon. No, that, that's the first, that's a down there question. That very first question is who is going to be legally responsible if something's wrong? I don't care what operation it is, if you just put a mandate on something, people can sue you for all kinds of things. And I don't think there'd be much sympathy in any kind of jury for us who just put out there an online program and aren't physically in the operating room to help with that. Great. Maybe I'm being too cautious, but that would be the first thing I would worry about before you do anything. Yeah, um, I think these legal questions are ones which the um, our world university and school law schools planned in 200 countries could begin to address with. Uh, yeah, well, but that's suggesting you got to get the law schools up before you get the med school up. Yeah, I, I mean, robotics is a completely new field in, in law. Um, and just to reiterate, uh, I think I mentioned this in last monthly business meeting as well. Uh, we are partnering with World University and School, um, with uh, law schools, with Stanford Law Codex, I would think, it seems. Um, so there may be an interesting set of opportunities regarding uh, lawyers, uh, law faculty that could even write this law um, for hypothetically Uganda um, as well. Um, okay. So once again, long term. So let's go on to something short term. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, WUS Corporation, WUS Press. Um, moving on to the second wing, uh, having talked with Robert Morgan again yesterday morning. Um, agenda item A, um, cryptocurrency developments regarding Stanford Mind Pie free money daily and coding. How have they survived the last six weeks like all the other cryptocurrencies failing? So they're not listed on any stock exchange yet. Okay, all right. And so you have no, no information. Well, I continue to mine Pi cryptocurrency daily on smartphone and uh, it goes up by the second out five digital points places. Um, and the app is very reliable. Um, it's, uh, it seems very solid. Um, even though, even with the items I've mentioned in various monthly business meetings, uh, and it, recently after attending a Stanford Law Codex uh, about nine days ago, the day after the validation process I went through, uh, 10 days before that, um, was approved, was validated. So that's another step. Um, I wrote written an application on the Stanford on the Stanford Mind Pi app, and uh, on it uh, on the process. So it seems to be developing pretty well. The Stanford Mind Pi cryptocurrency, where okay. we want to add uh, something is coding for all seven point nine billion people on the planet, and uh, potentially to end poverty worldwide by distributing a main or single cryptocurrency and in most of 200 countries. So cryptocurrencies are going through um, a lot of flux these days, as you asked about. And how um, any one 
would become uh, a main or uh, nearly uh, reaching most people on the planet is not at all clear. Uh, if they're all trading on the uh, main net exchange, um, then they're all sort of maybe vying in their own spaces as cryptocurrencies having joined the serious ones having joined the main net exchange, including Stanford Mind Pi. Uh, could we use our seven our focus on coding for 7.9 billion people as a way to become a most main cryptocurrency? Um, people might still be buying and selling stock for Ethereum and Bitcoin. And um, whether people are buying things with those coins at all <laughs> or not, or if people are buying certain things with those coins in their new digital form. So I think our goal of coding for 7.9 billion people and to end poverty would be a way to make Stanford Mind Pi, which seems very reliable and improving. Uh, reach a lot of people. Um, what do you do? You have? Uh, do you think that's feasible as a, a vision? Well, it's feasible, and, and but it since since there's no listing nationally, we really can't check it's behaving. All you're suggesting is that the the uh, web page for it stays up and is solid. Now that's fine, but whether there's any use to all the things is a question. Now, I'm still. Hasn't been waiting to find out. Um, yeah, yeah. So you mean when will we be able to buy actual objects with well, Stanford? That's my part point? of it. But more than that, when will we be able to check whether it actually is a going concern? All you're checking is is it working, doing something. Well, it's doing something because it's telling you you have more mind buys. Is that the wrong proper term? We have more pies. I don't know. Yeah, more it, pie coins, <laughs> pie pie coins or something. Yeah. yeah. Um. One of the things I mentioned to Robert Morgan uh, yesterday morning was that um, World University and School, the WS Corporation, is seeking to code for all 7.9 billion people, potentially to list Stanford Mind Pie in a partnership with them on the new Silicon Valley long-term stock exchange. Which doesn't exist yet, right? No, it seems to be up and running. Um, and they have uh, a way to join them, uh, but we don't have any money and we're still so small that- um, Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Um, so it's one more of these long range problems. You just gotta be patient until it's yep. possible. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, I mean, we want to combine this with um, world university and schools wiki education for speakers of all 7,000 languages. But that first involves having completed this wikibase.cloud migration journey, which we, is done, and then coding for 7.9 billion people, and then building out the wiki schools in all for speakers of all 7,000 languages and building communities in them. Uh, there's a video from Stanford on universal basic income that's uh, in the Forbes magazine YouTube channel uh, from a philosophy professor there, Juliana uh, Bidianuri from France originally. Um, and where we're, Work World University and School and Work WUS Corporation is seeking to add uh, to universal basic income is the universal word in planning for 7.9 billion people on the planet. Um, item A2, the validation process is complete. Um, item A3, uh, a main cryptocurrency. Item A4, cryptocurrency identity issues continue to be complicated, but I think they're, they're working out. Uh, one distinction will be on blockchain exchanges. So all the serious cryptocurrencies which have joined mainnet blockchain will be on blockchain. 
and there'll be a whole bunch of other off blockchain decentralized validated identity questions emerging. Uh, interesting uh, sort of division in the emerging cryptocurrency sphere, blockchain, non-blockchain. Okay. Um, agenda item B, uh, thanks to Harvard professor Larry Lessig and congressperson Ro Khanna for retweeting, both of them retweeted, uh, the Harbin book Twitter post for Naked Harbin Ethnography book from 2016 um, about an upcoming talk they were they gave at the uh, Internet Archive in San Francisco on Ro Khanna's Dignity in the Digital Age book. And he's the congressperson for Silicon Valley in District 17. And he's, uh, um, it was a great conversation. And also, um, it was interesting to get his book from Google Books uh, in audio format and uh, listen to this. It was a great read to listen to. And it's um, an inspiration in many ways. Uh, for the book, the Google Books bookstore, and uh, coming in contact with him as the Silicon Valley congressperson uh, is a great inspiration for um, world university and schools developing online bookstores. Uh, interesting to see how a book talk turns into an opportunity for. Um, uh, exploring how to develop a uh, world university and school in the WS Corporation further. Is there any way we can reach out to Ro Khanna and Larry Lessig for further networking uh, regarding developing the WS Corporation and even cryptocurrency? Can you think at this point? We'll explore that later. Um, agenda item C, Wikidata um, and the WS migration to Wikibase Cloud uh, are partnering further. Hello, Larry. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just when I got to, I didn't understand something, and I started to ask why I didn't understand. Then I realized it's because whatever you said got cut off halfway through a word and it didn't make any sense. Okay. Uh, how could we reach out, um, maybe via Larry Lessig and Ro Khanna, uh, with regard to uh, cryptocurrency and the WS Corporation even listing it to on the Silicon Valley Long Term Stock Exchange? It's sort of my question. I I think we sort of have to wait till all the stuff with all the cryptocurrency slows down a little bit. My feeling right now is everything is so up in the air and changing so rapidly that whatever we did, we did lost in the shuffle. Good point. Um, one of the uh, items a little bit later is how world, you know, the WS Corporation could use AI to anticipate when populations standard of living are going to increase, possibly because they're getting Stanford mind pie as UBI experiments. Um, could well, we- that's, much, that's yeah. not much different than asking, when am I gonna win the lottery? <laughs> that's possible with AI. In interesting, I, I mean, could we um, plan with AI to distribute pi cryptocurrency to certain populations, one after the other, um, and then, in a way, guide the boat of uh, people getting cryptocurrencies. Uh, so it's not um, the randomness of the lottery. Instead, could we use AI to uh, plan for which populations will get? A cryptocurrency like Stanford Mind Pi, 
And then could we also set up our stores, our educational services stores for even uh, a teaching and learning robot in all 7.9 billion people's hands, arms? Well, it seemed to me the first requirement though is some people who in the receiving end have to be in, we can't do it for them. Great. Um, one interesting model for this could be the uh, release of the euro currency about 20 years ago and the role that countries played in that as they replaced their sovereign currency. And um, could World Universe, the WS Corporation, uh, if we were getting even resources from nation states, if they were sort of buying Pi cryptocurrency from California, then facilitate getting this currency into their population's hands. That's sort well, of the big vision. I, think, I see how that could work. But again, it's required to on the other end to be active. And I don't know how to get them active. If they're already, if they already have a currency uh, that they're working with, um, yeah, each country has got its own currency that it's working with, with not much incentive to do anything with cryptocurrency. If uh, the all nineteen countries in the eurozone are already having buying and spending with euro currency, and a central bank, the European Central Bank says you can buy with Stanford Mind Pi on your smartphone and you can download it now. I think that would be incentive. I mean, that would be incentive for people to do it. But what's going to cause those central thirds, central banks, if you will, to say that? I mean, it's already possible to get. Uh, Stanford Mind Pi application on one smartphone. Yes. And but uh, it's not possible to do anything with them. That was my point before. <laughs> Good point. Uh, so, so say a uh, European Central Bank for all 19 Eurozone countries says you can now buy with Pi cryptocurrency what you could buy with Euro. And they also uh, let the population know widely, say in in uh, yeah. in Norway what, or in. What's going to be their motive to do that? The benefits of the Pi cryptocurrency uh, going up, um, and a plan even uh, maybe from Stanford Mind Pi, maybe from the WS Corporation. Uh, to end poverty and with uh, a beneficial cryptocurrency. Um, that so what, what, what if I haven't heard much from the side of Stanford to do that kind of stuff. Are they in fact actively doing anything? I think um, Stanford Mind Pi cryptocurrency is um, continuing to grow their uh, their miners, their pioneers, and they have something oh, like thirty. I, like I haven't heard you say that. <laughs> That's not. Hey, go ahead. And they have something like thirty-three million people. They say um, now who are um, download who have downloaded the app. I would think um, for Stanford Mind Pi, out of seven point nine billion or out of 330 million people in the US. But those- Yeah, and how many of them stay active? That's the question. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, it just seems to me you don't hear about it. So that uh, implies to me not much is going on. I wonder about um, whether even when the Euro currency 20 years ago was released, uh, and the, the Italian lira or the um, Norwegian uh, currency, 
Kroner, uh, is that right? Um, yeah. What was um, uh, in a way removed from the market? Was was Italy or Norway advertising their currency, <laughs> the new euro currency? I don't think Norway's in the um, the eurozone. Actually, I think they have. That's right. Um, but anyway, the people who were advertising it had already released the plan that they were going to switch. Right, right. Or they did, they just didn't start doing it. So there was some notice to people that it was going to happen. I, I think nation states could, could, could uh, play that role. Um, and if they had, um, say, with World University in School, being each a Wikidata pin number um, for 7.9 billion people uh, in one sort of, um, and maybe even in the, based in the same city um, that uh, some of the Euro uh, is based in, um, Berlin, for example, that they're could be incentive for uh, the Eurozone to become a pie zone. Um, if this cryptocurrency with all the due diligence that um, the European Union is going through with all kinds of digital uh, technologies shows that pie um, is the best cryptocurrency out there. And I think Stanford Mind Pi's coding of it could make it the best. And I think a plan could be developed to uh, at the WS Corporation to make it available not only in the 19 Eurozone countries, but in all 200 countries with AI. Um, that's my hope. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, uh, agenda item D. Um, WS faculty homes for field work. Um, could we even develop the Toyota Pro Ace autonomous vehicle electric camping van? <laughs> uh, um, with um, which may get as much a, a close to what the Toyota Prius Prime car gets of 133 miles per gallon equivalent or 50 miles per gallon on gas. Um, as faculty homes, or also as um, uh, even little hospitals. There's, we talked about in business meetings some months ago, the Toyota armored van for as an ambulance in some countries. Uh, all of this could become interesting. These could become interesting um, sites for world university and school faculty and similar, and even with robotics. Uh, could there be uh, an all-weather autonomous Toyota Pro Ace van, which is developing in Norway, that could have a shower <laughs> in winter? Um, who knows? Um, for faculty homes, maybe. Um, uh, item D3, WUAS, physical digital robotics, educational services stores focusing on teaching and learning robots. Um, and uh, with autonomous vehicles that learn, um, could we uh, not only make available teaching and learning robots in our stores, but also autonomous vehicles that also learn um, with our learning focus and collaborate or learn from the Google, the two Google stores in New York City area? Maybe. My, maybe. My take on that is things are developing much slower than all the people like would like. All the people are enthusiastic about this product. Oh, it'll only take five years. So that prediction was 25 years ago and still isn't being made. And so they run into a real serious public problem here. If there's one death due to the autonomous vehicle, people will note it and remember it. But there are 30,000 on the highway every year nobody pays attention to. And that's a public relations problem I don't know how to overcome. 
Interesting. Great. I, I mean, the the as we talked about last business meeting, the Toyota humanoid robot uh, THR3 um, came into existence in 2017 in a finished form. Uh, if we could collaborate and make it modular and make it out of Lego bricks uh, with the Toyota joints and the master maneuvering system, um, maybe it's already here and maybe we can grow robots, humanoid robots, um, autonomous vehicle robots for learning and teaching purposes as a university. Uh, that's my hope. Okay. Um, we're towards the end of time, but um, agenda item F, a robot in everyone's arms, all 7.9 billion people, like a $20 Mr. Coffee maker in the woman's arms I saw at Walmart recently. Um, and regarding seeking World University and School seeking to hire 2.3 million people over the next few years um, on both of our wings, educational and um, and WS Corporation, maybe. Um, agenda item G, uh, WS to design and produce, um, uh, rather than NASA or Shimano, a back wheel hub for a bicycle with a motor inside it that's super lightweight. Uh, all part of maybe uh, our designing and producing eventually uh, even robotics and beyond a Lego or in collaboration with a Lego Toyota standards, modular robots, another for teaching and learning, maybe. Maybe. Um, super lightweight batteries for bicycles that have 500 mile range. <laughs> um, yeah. That would be great. Um, agenda item H, um, could we also uh, develop a smartwatch? to uh, for longevity gen genetics and even uh, use it to forward our own longevity genetics beyond 122 years of age through a skin patch on the wrist um, connected maybe with some sort of Google Street View with time slider, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning software to molecules and also to reverse aging genetics um, in Google Street View with Time Slider through a skin patch connected to molecules. Uh, that's um, a, a fascinating possibility. We're so far from it, but um, that smartwatch would have a lot of value. What do you think? I think people would forget it, put it in water, lose it, not care and not wear it. <laughs> I think there are so many problems that I don't foresee it happening. <laughs> so um, maybe uh, um, people you're, will- You're inventing a continuation of the Dick Tracy. <laughs> Tracy's <laughs> smartwatch, right? That's been 75 years ago. And yeah, they made improvements, but a long way. Smart Smartwatches um, were recently uh, reviewed, for example, in Consumer Reports. Um, uh, and and ranked as well. Um, one for longevity genetics and aging reversal through a skin patch uh, is something maybe many people would not tune into whatsoever, um, but it would be an interesting technology to code for. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, great. Thank you for uh, joining monthly business meeting, uh, Larry. Okay. And um, talk to you later. Talk to you later. Uh, I hope you have a good weekend. Bye for now. Okay. Bye. So that's monthly business meeting for July, June 18th, 2022. I'm Scott McLeod. That was Larry Veland on the phone. Uh, till next Monday, next uh, monthly business meeting uh, in July, third Saturday of the month, uh, 9 a.m. hour long uh, Pacific time. Uh, this will be posted to youtube.com forward slash 
W-O-R-L-D-U-N-I-V-A-N-D-S-C-H. And uh, until another time, bye for now.